Hello everyone, let's continue with uh, theme 6, language acquisition. This is going to be part 3. In this part, we are going to uh, continue with language acquisition. But our focus will be about the implications of the behavioral approach. And uh, we will finish this uh, part regarding uh, the behavior approach to language acquisition, this theory, this approach, talking about its limitations its weaknesses. Of course, uh, concerning the implications, that means how, what we mean by implications, by the way, it simply means how the behavioral approach, approach explains the, our first language acquisition, how we acquire our first language. Okay, let's read. The behavioral approach considers the first language acquisition a matter of the establishment of habits because of the two processes that are reinforcement and reward. And we have explained this before, we explained this uh, in the basic assumptions of, let's say, uh, the behavioral approach. Uh, according to behaviorists, the baby obtains native language habits via var varied babblings that resemble the appropriate words repeated by a person or object near it. According to behaviorism, the process of acquiring our first language is a theory of stimulus response psychology through which the trial error process in which acceptable utterances are enforced by comprehension and appro approval and unacceptable utterances are inhibited of course by the process of reward let's summarize these two fundamental ideas that explain how we humans come to acquire our first language uh, first language uh, following the behavior approach we said that the behavioral approach to psychology uh, in psychology explains the, the development of any human behavior based on the conditional process, stimulus response, reinforcement. When it comes to language as a, a human behavioral, uh, let's say, uh, behavior, a verbal behavior, as uh, behaviorists uh, name it, uh, language, the humans, we said that infants, they are born with a, a white sheet, tabula rasa, then they are exposed to the external world, external environment, that generally the parents, the family, where they, they live in. And then they come to hear from others, listen to others, the language. Then there is the process of imitation. They repeat while listening and repeating. They may fail sometimes and sometimes they may succeed. At the beginning, they, sometimes they rarely succeed, but they fail. But through this process, there is also the process of trial and error, uh, failure and success. And the, there is the process of reward and sanction. Here we talk about reinforcement. That means when the, uh, the infant succeeds in, in, in imitating language, generally, the people surrounding the infant, parents, mother, father, uh, brothers, sisters, the family members, they reward the infant. And this helps the, the child to obtain, to gain, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to obtain this language, the language, the, the form of language. Now, sometimes when the child produces something wrong, there is sanction. And this process eliminates this form of language. So this process of reward and sanction, reinforcement, helps the child to and the infant to acquire language. Overall, uh, the process of language acquisition, according to behaviorism, there is conditioning, there is exposure, there is also imitation, repetition, reward, sanction, and then there is the acquisition of our first language. This is overall how uh, the behavior approach explains our first language acquisition. Now, regarding the limitations, the weaknesses of this theory to language acquisition, that is the behavior approach, we can read language is based on a set of structures and rules which could not be worked out simply by imita imitating individual utterances. The mistakes made by children reveal that they are not simply imitating, but actively working out and applying rules. 
means when observing how children acquire their L1, we can deduce that it's not only imitation. Sometimes they produce some rules that they have never heard before. Sometimes children produce sentences they have never heard and repeated before. That means, in this case, children, they have some rules and they actively work out and apply these rules and not they gain and obtain these rules from the others who are to whom they are exposed. Children are often unable to repeat what an adult says, especially if the adult utterance contains structure that the child has not yet started, uh, let's say, uh, grasping, which simply means that sometimes children produce structures, a form of a language, but when it comes to repeat them, imitate them from adults, they cannot imitate them. This also explains that the process of imitation, imitation, yeah, there is some, some, some argument that says that imitation is important in language acquisition, but it's not everything. It's not everything. Uh, something else, it's about the critical age. There is evidence for critical age period. The CAP for language acquisition, it simply means that the children who have not acquired language by the age of about seven, we never entirely catch up. Of course, uh, we have talked about critical age, that is, children easily acquire their L1 within the critical age, but after the critical age, it's very difficult for these uh, children to catch up and to acquire their L1. And there is a very good example that usually stated in the literature on language, first language acquisition of the uh, uh, child whose name was Ginny that was discovered in 1970 at the age of 13. She had been severely neglected, brought up in isolation and deprived of normal contact. She, certainly she was disturbed and, and underdeveloped in many ways. Uh, simply to summarize this story, Ginny, she was uh, discovered at the age of 13, uh, deprived and isolated. She did not have any contact with others. She did not uh, communicate with any other person. At the age of 13, she was not able to express herself with her language. When the people at that time discovered her, they wanted to, let's say, between inverted commas, to teach her to speak, but she failed. She could not be a very competent, proficient in communicating using her L1. This story gave evidence for the critical age. That means it is usually stated that is, it's not, uh, sometimes it's impossible or it's very difficult to acquire our first language after L1. And this is against the idea of repetition, imitation, uh, uh, of the behavior approach that helps any person that help any person to acquire land. That means imitation conditioning. It's not uh, uh, the main reason uh, that help uh, uh, any any person to acquire L1. But there is something else. This 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 thing will be uh, presented and discussed next when we talk about the next theory that is the cognitive approach to language acquisition. For this part uh, about uh, the uh, basic about the behavioral approach and how it is explained and its limitations, implications and limitations uh, uh, for this uh, this part. Uh, so we can say that it's enough for this part, and we thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed.